Just a few on the third, here we go. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. back and sing that last verse again right there at the end you were starting to sing and it was starting to sound good so I believe if we go back and sing it again I believe you'll sound good Amen. excited to be in church tonight too man well the choir's excited to be here if y'all get excited and they get excited we might go to church amen let's go back and get that last verse sing from your heart now just a few on the third be in the Lord's house tonight. Let's Amen. open up a word of prayer. Then we'll get right into service tonight as we pray tonight. Let's do remember each one of our preachers out of the church. Pray for them. Pray that God will give them a good service tonight. I'm not going to take time to go down through the list, but do continue to pray for each one of them. Pray that the Lord would help them tonight. Amen. Let's remember all of our missionaries. Pray for them, which I'll mention several mission letters here before we get our missions offering tonight, but do remember them. Um, do keep praying for the different ones that's sick. We've got several that's out sick, so do keep praying for them. Pray that the Lord will continue to help them. Um, uh, do keep praying for Brother Randy. Got a good report at the doctor this week. And uh, probably, if everything goes as, uh, as they hope, no more surgery. Amen. And um, thought he may have to have one more, but um, hopefully and prayerfully, surgery's done. Amen. Amen. Five in, the, in, in just a few days is enough, isn't it, Brother Randy? And uh, But anyway, do keep praying for Brother Randy. Pray that the Lord will continue to help him and meet the needs there. Amen, Brother Dakota. Did y'all have a good service this morning? Amen. Brother Jonathan, was it thanks to Calvary? Yes, sir. Had a good day there. How about Youth Church? Real good day. Did y'all have any shouting out there? Morgan did. Morgan did? <laughs> wow. You going to shout in here tonight, Miss Morgan? <laughs> well, she's still thinking about it, and I'd say on the trip home tonight, uh, Brother Heath will hear about that. But anyway, man, uh, good to see everybody back tonight. Brother Heath, how about you open us up in prayer? Just Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you do for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being God. We just thank you, Lord, for loving us, God. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us to live the life that we live, God. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die on Calvary, God, for our sins, God. God, I just thank you so much. We're so undeserving, God, for so many blessings that you've given us, God. God, I just thank you, Lord, for so much, God. I pray, God, tonight, God, that you'll show up and show out tonight, God. I pray, God, you touch Brother Josh tonight as he stands, God. I pray, God, you'll anoint him, God. Fill him up with the Holy Ghost, God. Hide him behind the old cross, Lord. Just use him in a mighty, mighty way, God. God, I pray, God, you'll touch the choir, the special singing, God. And God, most importantly, if there's someone here lost tonight, God, they'll come to know you as their personal Savior, God. Keep us safe, God, as we go our separate ways and just bless us all, Lord. In the name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Worship with the choir tonight as they sing. i 
and Savior, for through His blood He set me free. Though rough the road, I shall not waver, for some glad day His face I'll see. See as my reward.
Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on the Shake hands with each other as the choir comes down. Appreciate that good singing by the choir. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Madeline, run back there on my desk and get those missions letters. There's a stack of them. Bring them out here. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Amen. And uh, there is a roof up above me. Amen. I've got shoes on my feet and clothes on my back. Got food in my belly. Yeah, man, they ain't much. I'm starting to get hungry, but um, uh, these eggs and tater tots and orange juice at the house, amen. And uh, I thank God for his blessings on us, amen. You know what? If we got what we deserved, every one of us would be in hell tonight. 
That's exactly where we'd be at. But aren't you glad for grace? I was, um, uh, I was listening to Dad today. I went to a funeral, and Dad was doing the funeral, and um, he, he talked about grace in that funeral. And um, uh, his first point was delivering grace. And I sure am thankful for delivering grace. Amen. I'm glad that I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Amen. Thank God for His grace tonight. Amen. Well, let me make a few announcements, then we'll get into the service tonight. Don't forget service on Wednesday night. Looking forward to a good, good time in the Lord's house. Amen. So remember that Wednesday night. Make sure you're faithful on Wednesday night. And, um, of course, the Discovery Bible Club at 7. It runs from 7 to 8.10. But then also, don't forget regular service at 7 o'clock. We'll be back in our discipleship course that we're going through on Wednesday night. So do remember that. Make sure you're faithful to that. And then on uh, Friday night, Friday evening at 6 o'clock, o'clock. Don't forget our appreciate leadership appreciation meal. Looking forward to that. I'm excited about that, so make sure you're here for that. We'll have a good time. And uh, we did not do a sign-up sheet on that. Um, the reason we didn't is because we're just trusting all of our leaders will be here. All of our Sunday school teachers and our Discovery Bible Club workers will be here. Um, so do remember that. And, of course, our treasurers and our deacons. So do remember that. And uh, make sure you're here for that. Now, we ordered the food uh, based on that. Amen. Um, so you say, Preacher, what does that mean? That means you're going to have a plate and you're going to have a place to see it, so please make sure you feel your seat and you feel your belly. Amen. And uh, I'll give us a little devotion out of God's Word, and we'll be talking about March Madness. We're going to be doing that in the month of March, and uh, we'll be going over some of that. So uh, make sure you're here Friday evening. I'm looking forward to that. And then service on Sunday. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to having a great, great time in the Lord's house on Sunday. And then don't forget, I made mention this morning, February the 23rd, February the 23rd is the men's conference there um, in North Wilkesboro. It's uh, put on by Cherry Grove Baptist Church. It's not at their church, um, but it's there in North Wilkesboro. And uh, men, I sure, wish, I sure wish that you would go with us to that. Um, it's going to be a great, great meeting. It starts at 2 o'clock and um, goes to around 6 or 6.30. They feed supper also. Um, Hershey's barbecue out of Burlington is catering that and um, when Brother Tim told me that uh, I, I thought well Brother Tim uh, McCann's a pastor there now my cousin uh, I was wondering if it was barbecue dipped in chocolate but he just said that well, I mean, that makes sense. Hershey's is chocolate. Somebody help me right there. Y'all know that Hershey's makes chocolate, don't you? And um, I paid like $20 for one of their candy bars and made it myself one time. And um, really didn't taste no different than the one I paid $0.99 cent for in the um, uh, in the convenience store. But anyway, um, um, Hershey's Barbecue is catering out. And it's going to be a great, great meeting. The theme of it is striving together, just working together. Um, the preachers are Brother Joe Arthur, Brother the C.T. Townsend and Brother Chris Hazlett. That's going to be a phenomenal meeting, amen. And uh, men, I hope that you'll make plans to go with us. The cost is $20, and Miss Leslie has the sign-up sheet on that. So if you'll see her, you need to pay her when you see her, and um, get your name put down on that, and um, we'll go have a great, great time. I'm excited about that, and uh, men, I really hope that you'll go with us on that. It'll be good. And then I made mention of this. Don't forget March the 28th, 29th, and 30th is our second annual Escape to the Mountain Men's Prayer Retreat. That'll be in Meridian, North Carolina this time at the Turkey Cove Baptist Church. And uh, if you've never been to Turkey Cove, man, you need to go to Turkey Cove. Amen. Um, it, I promise you, it's smack dab in the middle of nowhere. And um, you say, well, where is it at? Well, you go out of Marion going towards Spruce Pine, but then you turn back left and go out through yonder and you get there, alright? And um, we'll have a good time at that. Brother Milton Taylor will be back at it. Dad will be at it. Brother Jimmy Millsaps will be at it. And it's going to be a good, good time. So do remember those dates. And um, most importantly, remember service on Wednesday night. And uh, men, we need to know if you can go on February the 23rd. We need to know by next Sunday. Okay? We need to know by next Sunday. And the money turned in so we can mail that in on Monday. So um, please let Miss Leslie know and um, get your money turned in for that. And I said this this morning. If you truly 
truly do not have the $20 and um, you want to go with us, that means you're not going to go to Chick-fil-A after service tonight. Well, you're not going to go to Chick-fil-A after service tonight, but you're not going to go to Wendy's and you're not going to go to Burger King and you're not going to go pack, buy a pack of pale mails um, after service tonight. If you true, Do they still make pale mails? They do. Robert said, yeah. I mean, he was quick on the draw. <laughs> you use filterless or filtered? Without the filter. I'm going to tell y'all a story. When I was 16 years old, I don't know where these stories has come from lately, but when I was 16 years old, I, I was in Courtney Fire Department. And back then, I had just got in. And back in Brother Stan, they smoked in the fire department. I mean, you know, you walked in and needed an uh, 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 air pack to breathe in the firehouse. Anyway, there was an old guy named Bob Moody there. And um, Bob smoked camel filterless cigarettes. They was about that tall, bro. I mean, it was a little bitty. I remember we was in there. I had been in the fire department just a couple of weeks there. And old Bob lit one of them the filterless camels up. He took about three or four big draws off of that. And man, I'm telling you, he made it look good. And uh, I told him, I said, Bob, I need one of them. They all called called me Runt. That was my nickname. And he said, Runt, you can't handle one of these things. I should have known by the way he talked. But I said, give me one of them cigarettes. I want one of them. He said, all right. He handed me that thing, Bailey. I put it up to my mouth and I hit the lighter on that thing, Brother Josh. And I said, <laughs> and I thought, man, ain't nothing. Man, I bet I turned seven grades of green, and I, it was awful. It was the worst thing. I've, it was the biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my life. So the moral to the story is this. If you're going to smoke, don't smoke camel filterless. All right, they'll kill you. They'll make you talk like this right here, too, like Bob Moody did. But anyway, I don't know where all that came from, and she didn't like it. I think she's mad. <laughs> Because the preacher just got on her mama's sin. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> isn't that right, Brother Blake? He said, Amen. <laughs> Y'all wonder why Miss Stephanie talks like this every once in a while. <laughs> No, I'm just picking. But anyway, I don't know where that came from. I don't even know what I was announcing. But anyway, uh, don't smoke filterless cigarettes, Mel, but they'll make you talk bad. But anyway, um, what was I announcing? The men's meeting. Yeah, we're going to go up there in the mountains. They make stuff and they sell it in court jars. <laughs> we're going to pray when we get it. Amen. But anyway, can we delete all that from a live feed? <laughs> anyway, we'll have a good time in the men's meeting. We need to pray after all that. <laughs> we need to pray after all that. But anyway... Uh, let me mention some prayer letters here from some of our missionaries. Hey, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You know it really does. There's enough in life to cry about. And I promise you we'll cry together, but while we can laugh together, we ought to laugh a little bit. Amen? Uh, even if it is at mine and Stephanie's expense. Let's look here. Brother Keith Shoemaker, we heard from Brother Keith Shoemaker um, working in Africa. He said, while it is impossible to share everything in one prayer letter, I will attempt to give some short highlights. By God's grace, this year two pastors that were trained were able to start two new churches. Both Bible colleges are in full swing. We have around 20 students between the two of them. Souls have been saved and many have been baptized in all different churches. It is exciting to see what God is doing and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that name, where I currently pastor. We have seen some of the young men stepping it up and leading, singing, teaching, translating, etc. He says, we want to say thank you to those who have prayed and given to the Go Big Bikina Project. Um, here are some of the blessings that God has allowed us to accomplish. Five pieces of land purchased for the future churches, two and a half acres, Two and a half acres added uh, onto our camp land. A parsonage built for Pastor Renee, where one of the churches we were started, and church buildings built for the new churches. Man, thank the Lord for that. Amen. And uh, I tell you what, Brother Shoemaker is doing a great, great job. Um, I heard from Brother Todd McKeon working with Aries Hope Prison Ministries. He says since our last uh, since our last letter, um, we have uh, we have we have had one saved at Craigie Correctional and two in. 
in Yancey County Jail. One of the men that got saved at Yancey County Jail was a man that was a professing Muslim. How about that? Um, we also had the privilege of being a part of revival at Morrison Correctional Institute. This facility has, um, has an adult unit and a youth offender unit also. We were able to visit on both units and have several um, services each night. The Lord gave us a wonderful week. And we saw a total of 13 men call on Christ for salvation. Thank the Lord for that. I heard from Brother Ward, and uh, which he was here with us just not long ago, and um, talks about how the Lord continues to help there. Um, we had two uh, more people saved in the past month during our church services. Heard from Brother Gary Chris. Since our last prayer letter, we completed our Western trip in which we were able to see us a fellowship with six different missionary families as we traveled through 17 states and over 6,000 miles. Amen. Um, that's the kind of missionary I like to support. He's just not sitting around. Amen. Heard from Brother Hernandez working in Guatemala. Um, we have now started... Um, we have now started our free English classes in both churches on Monday and Tuesday nights. We have had a great turnout, and it has been a great tool to reach more for Christ. And some have even started coming to, to church faithfully and even helped in our first VBS. Speaking of VBS, our first one was a huge success. We started on November the 29th and went through December the 10th. We started the first day with 50 to 60 children, and by the last day in each village we had well over a hundred children. Then we had a young uh, mom who came broken but left whole after accepting Christ as her Savior. Amen. And uh, thank the Lord for that. I uh, heard from Brother Kirkman working in the state of Utah and uh, I just want to say this about this family right here. Man, it's amazing what God has used Brother Kirkman to do there in the state of Utah. Um, man, I'm telling you, God has blessed him. Of course, he went there and started the Mount Logan Baptist Church. He says several things here. We started um, November in a revival meeting in Wyoming. Mount Logan Baptist uh, Mount Logan Baptist had a special service to honor the veterans on Veterans Day. As with you all, December was a busy month. We had our annual Christmas dinner and everything turned uh, out great. Our youth choir had the opportunity to go Christmas caroling to four different nursing facilities. And uh, man, I, I, I'm just it's amazing um, what the Lord Lord has done there. Um, if you don't, if you're on social media and you don't follow Brother Kirkman or Mount Logan Baptist Church there in Utah, you ought to do that and just see what God is doing there. And uh, I, I really, in days to come, that church is probably not far from being an indigenous church and being able to put a pastor in it full time. And um, that's the whole point of missions: is to go out to start a church to get it to the point of being an indigenous church. And what I mean by that is a self supporting church just like we are and then turn that over to somebody and then go and start again. That's what a church planner is. He plants churches and then moves on and plants another one. And man, God has really done some great things there. Um, the Smithy family, um, we heard from them. They're doing a great job. Um, we have uh, continued to work um, in several different churches there. And uh, The English part of it is Hope Baptist Church and Trinity Baptist Church primarily. Both churches are doing well and continue to grow. Also so we have been excited to see how Redeemer Baptist Church has been doing in our absence. And uh, the Lord is using them in a great, great way. And uh, thank the Lord for what he's doing there in Chile. Heard from Brother Plato Shepherd. He's working out west. Um, uh, the Lord continues to bless there. Then we heard from Brother Ben Manley and his family. Um, during Christmas, we were able to cook a special meal and bring some basketball, soccer, um, and various toys or basketballs, soccer balls, and various toys to the children. It was a great blessing to have Ben's folks to cook and be a part of this service as well. Also during Christmas, the Lord allowed us to take part again in an orphanage and have a special service for our Christmas with them. And uh, thank the Lord for him and their work there in Albania. And uh, another, which all of our missionaries, I mean this from, all, from the depths of my heart, all of our missionaries are great missionaries. We just don't, if there's one not doing nothing, and we drop them and we pick up somebody that is. Amen. And, um, uh, but Brother Manley's doing a great job there in Albania and uh, thank the Lord for that. Amen. I, I won't say this tonight. Thank God for world missions. 
Amen. And, and, and I want to encourage you this year to give to missions. When we, get, when we take up the offering on, we, on Sunday nights, you're not just throw a dollar or two in that. That is what we're doing to help get the gospel across the world. Somebody give me a witness right there. It's what we're doing to help get the gospel across the world. And, uh, man, I thank the Lord for world missions and what God allows us to do. Um, I, I tried out 40 missionaries that we're able to support monthly. Um, of course, we have two out of our church, and um, I believe that that's going to grow this year. And um, I really do. And you say, well, what do you know about that? Well, um, some things you just can't let the cat out of the bag yet, but I do believe that that'll grow this year year, um, and the Lord will let us have even more preachers out of our church. But anyway, um, thank God for world missions, and I hope that you'll give to help keep the missionaries on the field. Amen. And I say it this way, you should give as if it was your family needing somebody to bring them the gospel. If that was your child in a prison cell that Brother Todd was going to, you would want somebody to go. And the only way they can go is if they are supported financially to do that. If you had a family member in Albania tonight, you would want somebody to come into the village and tell them about the Lord. Would you not? Would you not? The Bible said this, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Here's the thing. I can't go to all the world, but I can give to get somebody to all the world. Yeah, man. And, and Paul said it this way. He said, it's not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And when we're given to world missions, you know what? Those people that got saved in Chile, those people that got saved in Albania, those people that got saved in China, and on and those people that got saved in India, those people that got saved in a jail cell. You know what that is? That's not only fruit abounding to Amazing Grace Baptist Church, but if you give to world missions, that's fruit abounding to your account also. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Well, let's get our missions offering tonight. Missionaries, not missionaries. Um, uh, well, you are a missionary. Amen. You're supposed to take the gospel out. Amen. Um, ushers, come on tonight. And the girls, y'all come on, get ready to sing for us in the offering tonight. I'm looking forward to hearing them. Amen. You give good in the offering tonight. Brother Adam, ask a blessing over the offering, buddy. Amen. These girls are going to sing in just a second. I want to say this, and I said this last night at the Foothills meeting. When our young people get up to sing, and when our young people get up to serve God, we ought to ag them on more than we do anybody else. We ought to say amen for these girls more than we do anybody else. And any other young person. Any other young person that stands and sings, any young person that stands to teach a Sunday school class, you know what? We ought to ag them on. We ought to ag them on. We ought to ag them on. I, um, um, Madeline had started playing the piano a year or two ago, and um, we bought her a nice keyboard. We made her pay for part of it. That way she'll appreciate it more. But we made her pay for part of it. And you know what I've done? Man, I've agged her on. Uh, matter of fact, just, just a week or two ago, um, Ben Hart does some great um, tutorials online. And uh, I got her signed up for all of that to try to help better her in it. And you know what? When Olivia showed interest in playing a guitar and she showed she's going to do it, I, I bought her a good one and she paid for part of it. Because she'll appreciate it more, but she paid for part of it. And I tried my best to find the best teacher that I could find. And is it expensive? Yeah, it's very expensive. But you know what? It's something they'll have with them the rest of their life. The rest of their days, they'll be able to serve the Lord with that. I said all that to say, let's ag these young people on. Yeah, man. Let me say that again. Let's ag these young people on. Yeah, man, when they sing, let's say amen. You know what you'll do after service tonight? You want me tell you what you'll do instead of just running out the back door to go see who's winning the football game? You want me tell you? And we've already put a blocker in here tonight, so your internet's not going to work. Okay? Can I just say this? I'd be afraid to, to check a football score. And so I'd be afraid that God blow my phone up. Now, some of y'all has to have them with you for work. I understand that. 
I completely, but just, <laughs> anyway, you know what, instead of running out, you know what you'll do? You'll find these young girls tonight. You'll say, girls, that sure was good singing tonight. I appreciate that. You know what you'll do, and, 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 and I know it's my kids, but you'll find Olivia and Victoria. Say, boy, that's good singing this morning. You'll say, Madeline, that's good playing on the piano today. So what if they hit a wrong note? You'll say, that's the best I ever heard you play. Everybody all right tonight? I just feel like preaching a little while. Or to add these young people on. Let me tell you one thing, one reason I really believe that our young people is walking away from church when they get 18 and 19 years old. It's because everybody ags them on and everything else but the things they do in the house of God. We ought to ag them on, man. I'm proud of them. I love to hear these girls sing. Um, I, it wasn't long ago they got to sing and both of them got tore up and got to crying. Man, that tickled me to death. You know what that means? That means the same God that's in me. And the same God that tires me up everyone is the same God that's in them helping them. Amen. And y'all worship with them as they sing tonight. As I kneel down in the darkness In the middle of the night I'm praying for assurance Everything's gonna be alright Lord, I see another battle Out in front of me I'm afraid I won't be able And I'll go down in defeat and he said, do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you and that's just how far you come. Oh, and every time you asked me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see you through? And then I walk on the water, and I calmed the raging sea. I spoke to the wind, and it hushed, and I gave you peace. Then I run to your rescue, didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you, just so you wouldn't fall. And didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins? I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Now she's talking to her father in a house that was once a home. She said, my bills are coming due, Lord, and six days are not that long. She hears a voice so still and low. It says, I moved like that before, and I'll do this little thing, child, and I'll give you so much more. And didn't I walk on the water and I calmed the raging sea? I spoke to the wind and it hushed and I gave you peace. And didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. And didn't I leave all the heaven just to die for your sins? I searched until I found you and I do it all again. I searched until I found you and I do it all again. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for that. Amen. I like that part where he said, didn't I leave all of heaven? Didn't I leave all of heaven? Think about that statement. Didn't I leave all of heaven? Think about that. The portals of glory. A perfect environment where they're flying around you saying, holy 
holy, holy. That's what they're doing to Jesus, and that's what they have been doing to Jesus, and that's what they'll continue to do to Jesus. Yeah, man. That just didn't start when he came back from earth. That's the way it's always been. And he walked away from people giving him adoration and praise to come to earth, to be scorned, to be mocked, to be crucified just for you and just for me. He said, didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins? Listen to this. I searched until I found you. That's long suffering. I searched until I found you, and I'll do it all again. <laughs> he said, I do it. Oh, yeah, I do it all again. Thank God for that tonight, amen. Thank God for that tonight, amen. Well, I appreciate Brother Josh Jenkins. I mean that with all my heart and um, one of my dear friends. And um, we spent a lot of time together down through the years. First preacher ever called to preach um, out from underneath my ministry. And uh, man, down through the years, we've laughed a lot. We've cried a lot. Um, we've heard a lot. Um, we've laughed a lot. Um, we've been through storms together. We've been on mountaintops together. But we've made it this far and safely this far Jesus has brought us. And there just ain't no need to doubt him now. Amen. And uh, I sure love him. I thank God for him. Thank God for what the Lord's doing with his life. And um, can I explain all of his life? I sure can't. Um, I'll never be able to. I sure can't. But I know this. God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. He, God don't operate like we operate. I don't understand it all. But I do believe this. I believe God's got him in the right place at the right time. And I believe God's doing a great work in his life. I can't, under, I can't explain everything about Miss Carla's life. I sure can't. I, I'll never forget. I, I'll never forget when Miss Bridget went home to be with the Lord. I'll never forget when Brother Keith went home to be with the Lord. I was in Mary in North Carolina. I'll never forget that morning, early that morning. And um, whenever I got the phone call that Brother Keith had tragically went home to be with the Lord. And uh, I can't explain all that. But I can say this. Um, the Lord's righteous. The Lord's just. The Lord's not made any mistakes. Amen. And uh, I, I'm excited for what the Lord's going to do with their lives in the days to come. And uh, we've talked a lot, Brother Josh and I have. And he, he wanted to know if I had peace about it. He said, do you approve of Miss Carla? And uh, I said, I'll have to pray about that a while. And uh, I'm just speaking about that. And I said, I believe Miss Carla is a good godly lady that loves the Lord. And I sure love them tonight. I love, I love their children. Amen. I'm excited about what God's going to do in their lives. I told Brother Josh this. I'm, I'm getting out of the way. I'm going to let him preach. I told Brother Josh this the other day. Um, Brother Josh really wanted a pastor. I know that. We talked about that a lot, but the Lord just didn't give him peace about it. And the Lord didn't give me peace about it. And I, I believe God will give the man of God peace about it too. I really do. And uh, I told Brother Josh, I said, God might just be going to let you sit a little while, let you heal for a little while, let you mend everything for a little while. And then I really believe in all of my heart that God's going to, I don't want him to leave, but I really believe in all of my heart that God's going to put him back somewhere one day I believe the greatest days of his ministry, their ministry, could still be in front of them. Amen. I sure do love you, buddy. You're at home tonight and come preach to our hearts. Amen. And uh, if you want Miss Tanya on the piano when you get close to the end, whatever, you at home, buddy. I love you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for staying true. There's a lot of people would have quit. You can holler, amen. And can I be real honest with you? I don't know if I'd still be standing here. It's very easy to say, well, I'd do this or I'd do that. You don't know what you'd do. I pray that I'd still be in the place. But I can't tell you for sure that I would. But I tell you publicly, thank you for not quitting. Thank you for staying with it. Amen. Preach to our hearts, buddy. I love you. In the Lord's house tonight. Appreciate the good singing thus far. I enjoy it every time I get to go to the Lord's house. It's a privilege to me. I don't take it for granted. I mean, I really do thank God that I can come tonight. 
preacher said something about Brother Randy this morning. He said, Brother Randy said the hardest part through all of this is not being able to go to church. And automatically I went back to Bridget's last days. And she told me, she said, the hardest part of all of this is not being able to be faithful to the house of God. And I thought tonight, I'm here. And God's given me health to be here and the strength to be here. And I don't take it for granted. This is my crowd. This is, the, this is the group of people that I feel like I can be myself around. And number to, tonight amongst us is, is great friends. And folks that's been there for me through, through it all. And I say thank you from the bottom of my heart for being true friends. The devil told me when I got right with God, I'd lose my friends. And you know what? I did. And I got some better friends. God gave me a whole new association. And I'm so thankful that God purged some people out of my life so that He could put some people into my life. And I thank God for that tonight. The preacher mentioned for preaching in Kings this morning and I thought to myself, boy, I sure am glad you ain't because that's where the Lord had settled my heart. And I want you to turn with me tonight, 1 Kings chapter number 18. 1 Kings chapter number 18. I promise you, I'll not be very long. I'm not going to go into great detail. But I feel like uh, one of the men of God said there, said he's in a strength betwixt two. I've had one individual come to me tonight said, Preacher, I don't even pick up a channel. The Super Bowl's on. And then I've had another individual approach me and said, If you'll knock that last point off, I'll make you a homemade cake. <laughs> <laughs> So I really feel like I'm in a strength betwixt two. I don't know whether to be long-winded or just to say, Amen, let's go home. <laughs> she knows how to bake a cake. Somebody say, Amen. <laughs> it looked real good. I think I like cake. <laughs> Man said, you know your level when the bubble's in the middle. If there's any carpenters in the house, you know the way you can tell if something's level. You put a level on it. If that bubble's in the middle, she's level. Feller told me this week, he said, do, know, do you know how your girlfriend's level-headed? And I said, no. He said, when the snuff runs out both sides of her mouth. <laughs> Mine don't like snuff, but she sure likes red, man. Somebody <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. We better pray. Ain't it good to laugh? Uh, I've done put preachers are smoking filterless camels. And I'm a chewing red man. I'm telling you, we in a we in a straight, ain't we? Somebody better pray. Amen. First Kings, chapter number eighteen tonight. First Kings, chapter number eighteen. I'm going to pick up reading verse number 42. This fresh water. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. First Kings chapter 18, verse number 42. If you're able this evening, let's stand in honor and reverence the reading of God's Word. We'll pray and then you can be seated. The Bible says in verse number 42, the Bible says, So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth, put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There's nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud 
out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to entrance. Jezreel, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this evening. God, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm excited to stand here. But to be honest, I'm also nervous, God. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. But God, I pray that you would allow me to be your spokesman for the hour. And I pray, God, that you'd speak through me. I don't want to entertain folk. God, I want to be a, a voice in a dark world. And I want to be a help to you people. And I pray, oh God, Lord, that you'd use us for a little while tonight. God, I don't deserve your help. I don't deserve your power. And I don't deserve your touch, God. Oh, but I desire it, Lord, deep down in my soul. And I pray, oh God, you'd use me for a little while this evening that you might be exalted above measure and lifted up, God, and we'll thank you for it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. I love the book of 1 Kings, I love 2 Kings, and those of you that read and study your Bibles, I believe we would all agree that Elijah is the superhero, you might say, of this book of the Bible. And I love Elijah, and many great things to be said about this great man of God. I think about how that he walked up to the king and told him, that it wouldn't rain for a span of years and there would, be a, there would be a desert, there would be a dry time. And I thought about how that how Elijah also was the one that God guided down to the brook Cherith where he had sustained a little widow woman there uh, to sustain him through those times in his life. He was fed by the ravens. I thought about that. I thought about Elijah being the very man of God that prayed fire down from heaven. And there's so many good things to be said about this man named Elijah. But tonight, tonight, but tonight I want to look at someone else that's mentioned here in the scripture. The spotlight so many times is on the great man of God who was in tune with God, who prayed fire down from heaven, who God personally sent to the brook, who God fed with the birds. But we see in the passage of Scripture tonight, Elijah's not alone, but there's another individual mentioned here in the Scripture that I want to magnify tonight. We see in verse number 43, the Bible says, And said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up. Now I want to preach on that servant right there that we see in the Scripture. Matter of fact, as we look at this servant here, and all of my studies, I cannot find anywhere where this servant's ever mentioned by name. But this servant is referred to as a servant. The only reference that I can find in the Scripture about this individual is that it is a man because it says uh, he went up. And we see that it was a man, but as far as his name, it's never recorded in the Scripture. But there must have been significance to this man, for it's recorded in our Bible this evening. And I would say this, honey, it don't matter if anybody knows your name or not, as long as God knows uh, that you're doing what He's called you and chose you to do. My dad told me years ago, he said, son, too much time in the spotlight will fade your suit. And I, I believe that to be true tonight. I believe that to be true with all of my heart. And I want to look at that servant for a little while tonight. I would say this, Elijah, um, he has just um, uh, left from the brook chest. The brook's dried up. He has been the great battle between him and the 450 prophets of Baal where the, the bullock was put on the altar and uh, the prophets of Baal cried unto their God uh, from morning until noon uh, and nothing ever happened. Uh, and then Elijah began to pray uh, and fire fell down uh, and lapped it all up. I thought about the 
this. Oh, Elijah was a majority. The Bible speaks of him in a singular sense uh, and those prophets of Baal being 450. There was a man of God uh, with God on his side uh, and he made those 450 prophets of Baal. Uh, he made them look foolish, friend. Uh, he asked them, is your God asleep? Uh, where's your God at now? Things of that sort. And we see here, uh, we're just beyond that here in our scripture and we see that Elijah has went up under the top of Mount Carmel and he says to his servant he says I want you to go and look toward the sea and the servant went and looked and said there is nothing and he said go again seven times I would say this tonight as we look at our scripture. This request that the man of God has delegated to this servant, it may sound simple, oh, but it was so important. I want to preach on this thought tonight. A servant friend of the man of God. A servant friend of the man of God. I say this tonight. I'm not trying to get on the preacher's good side. Hey Amen. I'm glad that we're not at each other's throats and I'm glad that we're in unity. But I'm not here for the approval and the praise of my pastor. I love him and I thank God for him. Oh, but there's a God in heaven that's keeping record. And I want to be pleasing in his sight and hear those words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And let me say this tonight. The man of God has delegated a simple task uh, to this servant that's never mentioned by name uh, any time uh, that the man of God asks you to do something uh, let me tell you something honey it may be simple but it is important you do what the man of God's asking and God will bless you for it uh, I battled all day about preaching this uh, I thought something like this uh, when I was pastoring it would have been hard to preach this message uh, but I sure wish the preacher would have come through and preached it for me. And I come tonight to say this. Uh, with the leadership of the Holy Ghost, we should all be friends um, of the man of God. Oh, I'm telling you, man of God's living in a dark air right now. Hell's attacking him by the day. I mean, I'm telling you, if we've ever faced opposition and spiritual warfare, it's the day and hour in which we're living. The devil knows he has an allotted amount of time and he'll be cast off into the lake of fire day and night forever and ever. And his attack is raging. He's a fighting a man of God on every end. And can I say, even as a man of God, we need some friends that be there for us. A servant, friend of the man of God. This servant was never mentioned by name. Only reference we see to the scripture here is that it was a he. Let me say this, friend. It may have seemed, sounded simple that the man of God would delegate this task to this servant. And that, and that it was. It was a simple task. But can I say anything done in the work of the Lord is a major thing. Yes, sir. It don't really matter if you put letters on a church sign or cleaning of hands or pulling weeds out of the flower bed or vacuuming the carpets or scrubbing the toilets, honey. Hey, or getting children's... Tr- whatever the task might be, if the man of God asks you to do it, it might seem simple, but I promise you it's big in the work yes. of God. Yes. I told my boys, if you're a preacher or if you're a plumber, you do it all for the glory of God. This task may have sound simple and that it was. Not only was it a simple request, it was a specific request. Something specific that the man of God wanted this servant to do. He said, I want you to go and he said, I want you to look toward the sea. Not only did he tell him what to do, but he told him how to do it. (laughs) He told him what to do and he told him how to do it. I'm going to tell you there's times when a man of God will come to you and he'll ask you to do something and he'll tell you how he wants it 
to be done. Don't ask no questions, honey. Had you just trust his fellowship with God and you do it to the best of your ability, and I promise you God will be pleased with that. Amen. I struggled with saying this all day. But it's just the truth. I can't make his stuff up. It's for real. It's real life. Preacher called me and asked me if I'd help him cut a load of wood this week. And I'm telling you, within my flesh, I did not feel like it. I was tired and I was give out. I'd worked at the hospital all day. We was in the big of a big remodel project and I'd swung a sledgehammer just about all day. And I mean, my arms felt like jello. What I really wanted to do is go home and take a shower, turn the outdoor channel on, and hold that couch down for a while. That's what I really wanted to do. But my man of God needed me to help him cut some wood. And the Holy Ghost said, that wood's what's going to give him girls hot water. That wood's what's going to keep her house warm. And I went and I helped him coat a lot of heat of wood. And can I tell you, between when we loaded that truck to the time I got to the house, I got three bookings to preach from Mount Airy to Beulah. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven. And the things you do for the man of God don't go unseen. I'm not here for the appraisal or the approval of man. But there's a God in heaven who will smile on your labors for him, friend. This request might have sound simple. It was specific. He told him, he said, I want you to look toward the sea. And that servant did just that. And he come back and he said, I don't see nothing. There was nothing there. He said, go again. And he went seven times. Hey, the preacher might ask you to do some things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. I think that was seven. Hey, but let me say this. Hey, regardless, if you get old, you feel as if it's insignificant. You've done it to your flu in the face. You've given all you've got. Honey, you just keep on going for the cause of Christ it'll be worth it all one day I would say it was a specific request he told him to look toward the sea and he told him to go seven times I would say this also about that request it was a special request Elijah was in tune with God I'm talking about a man of God that just prayed fire down from heaven friend if anybody was in tune with God it was Elijah at this point in his life in his ministry it was a special request he didn't choose just anybody but he chose this servant in particular amen I've done preach my microphone this was a special request I mean the man of God the hero of the book of Kings uh, has asked this servant to do something he's asked him to do something I want to be honest with you I counted it a great joy to spend my evening with a pastor I really did I got tickled when he told me the name of his big red truck he said that's old Clifford the big red truck (laughs) and that kind of caught me funny But you know what? I can't think of anything I'd rather do than to help out my man of God. I'm not trying to get on your good side, but I'm trying to follow the Lord. I promise you, I promise you, if you'll take care of the man of God, God will take care of you. I challenge you with every fiber of my being and the authority of God's Word. Hey, you give what you can, and God will give you what you can. It might be a dollar. It might be some time. It might be a prayer. I'm going to tell you the most you can give your pastor. You say, how do you know? Because I've been one, honey. The best you can give your pastor is your faithfulness to the house of God. I know this is a Sunday night crowd uh, and the world's chasing a football tonight uh, and this is the core of the church, honey. But I'm seeing the core crack. I'm seeing the people that serve God fall by the wayside. Uh, I'm telling you, honey, you fall in love with Jesus, you'll have no problem being a friend of the man of God. This request, it was simple. It was specific. It was special. I 
want to say just a few things tonight and we'll be done. I would say this, this servant, he served without recognition. Nowhere in the scripture do I find where this servant got anything for his labor. Not one time was he ever recognized for the deeds he'd done for the man of God. It may even have went unnoticed or unknown, but we see it recorded here in the Word of God. He served without recognition. A lot of times people will do what the pastor asks as long as they get that pat on the back in the public eye. I'll be honest with you. Hey man, we need more Indians and fewer chiefs, friend. Let me just be honest with you tonight. You ought not expect anything in return. Just do it because Jesus saved you. And that'd be enough, friend. I'm not going to hell. Some 2,000 years ago, Jesus marched up Calvary's hill in my place. It should have been me. I should have been the one that hung on Calvary's tree. I don't stand here tonight for the approval of man. And I don't expect anything in return. But he called me to preach the gospel. And without being repaid, I just want to do something for God. Amen. He served Without recognition, he was never recognized. He served without recompense. He never got anything in return. Yes. I mean, look, it's, it's one thing to be paid for it. It's another thing to be paid for it hereafter. Yes, <laughs> I'm not looking for a paycheck, honey. I'm laying my treasure somewhere beyond the blue. Hey, one day God's going to have a crown and say, to the man of God. He served without recognition. He served without recompense. I would say this. He served without regrets. Nowhere in the scripture do we read where this servant regretted doing what the man of God had asked him to do. I ain't read it nowhere. And I don't believe it's in there. Pastor told me when I first started preaching he said no reserve no retreats and no regrets. Give it all for the cause of Christ. And I want to tell you to the best of my ability, September the 2nd, 2007, I surrendered to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stood in this very same pulpit and cried with my voice, friend, I'm telling you, it's still good, it's still exciting, and it's still repaying for Him. I'd say that. I don't have any regrets. I ain't got no sad stories to tell you. I'll be honest with you. The Lord's blessed me. And I've seen a lot of people saved. I've seen a lot of my family saved. When Bridget was living, we'd go to church. And none of my family went. None of them. Where's the oddballs? Where's the ones that didn't fit in? Nobody went to church. And I'm, I'm glad to say tonight that I promise you my mama's sitting on the church pew tonight. Saved. She taught her Sunday school class this morning. She sings in the choir. She cleans the church. And what the church pays her, she donates to missions. I say glory to God for that. Thank God I didn't give up and I didn't quit praying. I'm telling you, I'm not looking for a paycheck or a pat on the back. But God answered my prayers, honey. And that be enough, friend. My sister sung in a choir this morning. I've got a grandpa. It was my mama's daddy and at 70 years old, I watched him trade in his bottle for a Bible. And he got saved, got baptized, and he joined the church. And February of last year, God called him home. And I want to say this, friend. If there's anybody in heaven calls of me, I believe my papa's there. I'm not taking no credit for it. I know God sought him out where he is at. But I'm glad I went looking for something in return. But through it all, I've seen God's hand at work. I ain't got no regrets. 
Whatever it is a man of God asks you to do, you ought to do it with all your heart. Wholeheartedly. 100% give it all you got. Don't reserve anything. We see here that Elijah asked that servant to go and he went and he come back. Oh, he could have got upset and he said, I've done exactly what you asked. Had nothing happened. Oh, but he asked him again. And for seven times according to the scripture, he went back and he looked. He went back and he looked. He went back and he looked. Let me say this, honey. Give it all you got. Give it all you got. Don't hold nothing back. If a preacher asks you to put letters on a sign, you do it to the best of your ability. If he's got you vacuuming the carpets, don't miss no spots. Amen. If he's got you washing a church van, you wash it better than you would your own car. Amen. If he's got you pulling weeds out of the flower bed, you pull them all. You say, preacher, you ought not talk like that. If I didn't live by that, I wouldn't ask you to do it, honey. I'm telling you to the very best of your ability, you ought to give it all you've got with no reserve. Do what the man of God asks you to do. Not only did he serve without reserve, but he served without retreats. I don't know about you, but I ain't got nothing to turn back to. So true. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to go back to. This world has nothing to offer me no more, Brother Josh. I'm glad when God saved me, He saved me from the bottom of my foot to the top of my head. He changed my words. He changed my want-tos. He changed my friendships. He changed the places that I go. I'm telling you, He changed me from the inside out, honey. Hey, God made a new creature out of me. And without retreat, I'm going to do what God's asked me to do and what His man's asked me to do to the best of my ability until He calls me home. Whether I go by the grave or whether I go by the rapture, I'm going to give it all i got for the glory of God. I share the same fear Paul had. My greatest fear is becoming a castaway. I don't want to used to have served God. I don't want to be laid in my coffin right here one day and my children walk by and say I remember the day when daddy stood with the power of God on him but he messed up a long last year. I'm telling you without any retreats honey I'm going to give it all I've got until God calls me home. A servant, friend of the man of God he served without recognition. He served without recompense. He served without regrets. He served without reserve. He served without retreat. There was one little old task that the man of God had delegated to this servant. He said, I want you to go up there. Look toward the sea. Did you know that this little old weather man right here is the very report that God forecasted the rain and the revival was on its way again. It seemed as if it was probably unimportant to this servant, but the man of God had asked him to do. Elijah took that servant at his word. And he said, I want you to go to Ahab and tell him. We'll read it right here in the scripture. He said... <laughs> I like it. He said, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and, and went to Jezreel. You see... There was a sound of the abundance of rain. <laughs> and the very weather report that this servant brought back to Elijah, the man of God took him at his word. He said, go to Ahab and tell him these things. It may have seemed unimportant. But you see, it, had, it was very important. I mean, it was very important. The things a man of God asks you to do may seem unimportant. It may seem simple. 
may seem subtle and it may seem small, but if the man of God asks you to do it, you do it to the best of your ability. Not for the man of God, but for God. And trust the man of God. And I promise you if you'll do that, God will bless you for it. I don't, I don't come tonight to give myself any credit. I ain't worthy of it. But Elijah, I prayed the fire down from heaven. Elijah was in tune with God. Elijah was a man of God. I'm going to tell you tonight at our church, we got a man of God. What we got's unusual in this day and hour. I'm going to walk real lightly right here, but I've been in some places in recent days. They're starving for a man of God. They want a messenger of truth. Won't somebody to stand on the fundamentals? The King James Bible. Some does and some don't. That's the problem. I'm going to tell you something. We've got one that does. He asked you to do something and you don't do it. You're in the wrong. If he asked you to do it and you do it, then it's wrong. It's on him. But if he asks you to do something and you get rebellious or you think you're too good for that, then you're in the wrong. I ain't saying this to toot my own whistle, but I've weed eated that bank down there a thousand times and I didn't want nothing in return. Matter of fact, I'd mow the church and the church did give me a little bit, but I'd look over at the preacher's yard and that bank would need weed eated and I'd go over there and I'd weed eat that bank. Because I loved him. And I cared for him. Preacher, I remember digging ditches at East Bend when we rebuilt the faucet in that rental house. I didn't want nothing in return. I just wanted to be a friend to the man of God. I wanted to be a servant. Nothing more. And one day I'll stand before God, Brother Tim Ramey, and I want to hear them words. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. And I want to tell you something tonight, church. You'll not hear the words, well done, unless you've done well. You'll not hear the words unless you've done well. And the way you'll do well is by simply being a servant. I love each and every one of you. And I've tried my best tonight in the leadership of the Holy Spirit to follow Him. Whatever it is that God would have you to do, you do it to the best of your ability. Be honest with you, Dakota lived with me for a little while. And for a lack of better words, but I'm proud of that boy. invested in him and it's worth it to see in him be a servant I just want to do something for God God's been good to me how many here could truly lift your hand toward heaven and say I'm saved and I'm headed to heaven. Does anybody here raise your hand toward heaven and say, I'm saved? Yes, you see, God's already done something for you. Now we have the grand opportunity to do something for Him. It's my privilege to carry a King James Bible and to preach the truth of His Word. Yes, sir. Yep. It's my privilege yes, to raise my children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. It's my 
privilege and with great joy that I can stand in this choir Amen. and sing songs under the Savior. It's my privilege Amen. to come to the house of God and sit under good preaching. Amen. It's my privilege to feed the sheep and to also be one of the sheep that's being fed. It's my privilege to do something for God. I don't know what it is tonight that it is the Lord's asked you to do. Maybe there's some things you've been praying about. I would say this. If it lines up with the Bible. Hey Amen. If it lines... God ain't going to ask you to do anything that don't line up with the Scripture. Yep. If it lines up with the Bible and the under-shepherd approves of it, you do it to the best of your ability. And you do it that God might get the glory for it. Come play for us if you would. While she's coming, I want you to just search your hearts. You see, if you look up and down the pews you're sitting on tonight, there's people sitting with you tonight that you love and you care about. There's family and friends. God's placed those individuals in your life for a reason. Whatever it is God's asked you to do, you do it for the cause of Christ and for His glory. You've got people that you can reach that I'll never reach. There's people that'll listen to your words that won't listen to what I've got to say. But the good news tonight is this. We can all be a servant. We can all be a servant. We can all help somebody. We can all put a little sunlight in someone's life. We can all make somebody's day better. People don't care how much you know. They want to know how much you care. And I'm going to tell you, if you'll just be a servant, they'll know you care. It's still right to do right. Right. Yes, yes. This world starving to death for good men and good women had follow the leadership of the Holy Ghost and be good to their neighbor. Amen. Raise their children right. Yes, sir. Many of you have already raised your hand and said God saved you from hell. I'd ask you this tonight. How many of you know somebody lost and undone headed to hell tonight? I want to say this the right way. You be careful mingling with lost people. But oftentimes you'll have to become their friend before you ever convince them they need the Lord. Walk lightly. You don't have to partake in the things that they partake in. You don't have to go to the places that they go to. But you can love them from a distance. Yes. Yes. You can call them on the phone. You can send them a text message. You can tell them that you love them. And show them some genuine hospitality. And it'll go a long way. Be a servant. Friend of the man of God. I'm going to pray if the Lord spoke to your heart. You come to an altar. Preacher, you come. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. God, we...